Detailing and SketchUp and Layout is a, a wonderful tool for really showing how a building assembly works. Um, when you're first starting out in SketchUp and if you're considering converting to go like I did to full SketchUp and Layout, your probably your biggest investment in time is going to be building up your detail library, um, which is what I've done over several years now. So I have a very large library of details that I keep. Um, and the details are, you know, I've gotten a lot of questions. Are these part of your model? And the answer is no. The model would become too large to try and house this many components and pieces of information. So these are all just vignettes of different construction types of techniques. In this case, it's um, you're looking at a lot of metal roof details where we've got a ridge, we've got a rake detail, an eave, roof-to-wall parallel flashing, roof-to-wall perpendicular flashing, a shed roof ridge, a valley, a soffit detail, and then these are actually some going off of roof details. These are obviously masonry detail, a retaining wall detail, outside corner, inside corner details. And the, the key is to come up with a way to organize those details in a format that you can retrieve them quickly and edit them specific to jobs. So first I'll just show a little bit of how I organize them. Um, I actually keep a main folder um, that I have, which is a library of SketchUp. And I have one that's just specific to details. And then it goes through and shows all the different types of details that I've built up over time. Um, these are kind of what I call my base detail files. If you go into roof, you can see I've got different eave details, um, valley details, and so forth. And I do those for every type of um, detail that I do. So I've got windows, I've got a whole section, which is one I've just recently implemented, which is wall types, um, which are not, they're kind of like little vignettes of details. So I'll have, you know, different types of wall conditions, roof conditions, and so forth. Um, so I have roof types also. And so I keep these um, as a master file. And then within each project that I have, going up to here is a project that I'm looking at right now, I actually, within my SketchUp folder, keep a detail folder, which is organized very similar. So it has the doors, exterior trim, interior trim, roof, site, window details that I all keep within um, individual little SketchUp files. And those little SketchUp files as an example, I'll open up. Um, here is a standing seam roof. It's looking at the rake detail from underneath. Uh, where we are, we have some very specific requirements for how we deal with a soffit, and the construction needs to be fire rated, so it shows very specific information. Now, these are very simple vignettes. They're just little sections um, of a construction type, and I keep different scenes, because, of course, those are the scenes that are then loaded into um, layout and here is actually within this one file is three different details with one of them being a rake detail, one of them being soffit from underneath, one of them being the eave from above. And then those details are of course keyed into layout and rendered in raster based upon those specific scenes. So for every job all of those details and here I have several. There's window details. Um, as an example, this one window file, which is window details, actually contains um, six details. It has the exterior head, exterior sill, interior sill, interior jam, exterior jam, interior head. In this case it's a very simple just drywall return detail. But it shows all the components necessary um, for not only the building department but for the contractor to visually see where we have the corner beads, J beads, we've got the house wrap coming into the uh, window opening, we can see the um, vapor barrier, drywall, and the finish. So then in layout each one of those details then gets keyed in as a specific item. And you can, you know, of course, lay it out any way you want. I try to keep 12 details per sheet. And so in my layers, I actually have one which is a detail grid, which I shut off because I don't like to see the grid. But that just allows me to 
size the the view of the scene in each one of those images and position them exactly how I want them. And then each one of them is brought up. Um, in this case, I didn't set up sketch from all. It's just a unique element is each one of these views. And actually, sorry, I have that as the SketchUp reference. And so that SketchUp reference, then I can go in and see exactly, you can see it's scene one um, of that specific element. So if I go in and edit that detail, then I just have to um, uh, reload it and render it again. It's very simple. Um, it makes it great because I can get all my details job specific as opposed to just being generic details. And so in a lot of cases, I'll start with my base detail from my main folder, bring it into one of my projects, and then I'll edit it specific to that project. So on any particular job, because I've got such a large library now that I've built up over years, I usually have um, anywhere between six and ten sheets of details um, on any given home. So I can really cover every type of detail condition that I need to. Um, in this case, it's all roof details. Um, in this case, it's windows and doors with some miscellaneous exterior details. Um, in this case, it is um, all door details with this being typical exterior at stone. This is a, um, a nano wall detail, a garage door detail. And so I'll go through and provide enough information for the contractor in every aspect of the project that he needs answers he has, uh, which results in a lot of less questions during construction as well as obviously cost savings when you can anticipate what's going on. Um, I really like detailing in SketchUp because you really build the assembly so you see how those components fit and work together. As an example, this is a slider at a deck and so you understand where it's flashed and how the flashing works, how it sits in relationship to the decking. Um, I get the actual profiles off of the files online. For instance, this is Sierra Pacific, their slider. I know it's current. I just bring in the profile as an AutoCAD file into SketchUp, and then I extrude it, and it makes the profile work. I know how it fits. I can see exactly how it fits within the given frame. Um, so when I look at the jam, I can see the nailing flange. Um, how it's going to fit in relationship to where we have our little shim space as well as this, how the trim fits to that and how it's flashed. Makes for a very um, well thought out detail. Here you can see how the siding is sitting on top of the flashing that sits over the head and of course the flashing membrane to flash that to the um, air infiltration barrier. Makes it for a lot more detail than if you were looking at it in 2D straight on just like this it really doesn't tell you all that much information as opposed to seeing it at an angle. Um, you can of course scale them but typically you're not scaling details anyways so the drawings are not to scale which are labeled as such but there are no dimensions on them at any rate. Uh, the nice part about SketchUp though is if I wanted to dimension them you can dimension them and the dimensions will be accurate to the model. They will not be to scale, but they will be dimensioned, which is a nice feature. Um, I use that on some exterior details, uh, which works really well. I mean, as an example, if I came in here, I'm not sure what size this is, but I may not have this set, but it is. Magically, it's dimensioning at exactly seven and a quarter inches, which makes sense because those are two by eights. Um, and I do dimension some details uh, when I do some exterior information. I'll have some details that'll specify, for instance, a framing member's length that's exposed. And it's nice knowing I can just go ahead and dimension it and not worry about it being to scale. Um, just finding the time to create the library is probably your biggest investment. But once you get going, it, it goes very fast and you realize that you can do a lot of things that are standard. Like I, I repeat these studs just about everywhere um, because a stud is a stud. And so you just keep repeating that information. Um, siding, 
you can come up with so many different types of profiles and so many different types of materials that are out there available. You can really customize it to every specific job or to what your style is. I use a lot of fog to give the feeling of the vignette, which hides that the model actually is a very small element. Um, as an example, when I was back on the window, you can see this is, it's really just a little vignette of a wall. Um, and this one, if I remember, the looks like, yeah, so there you can see when you put the fog on, you don't see the rest of that. So it looks like it is part of something much larger. Gives a nice effect in the drawing as well. When you look at some of these sheets and how that vignette really helps give it a much larger scale than it really is. That's about it for detailing.